His topic today is information security and privacy considerations for cloud services. Listen to an experienced CISO as he elaborates on the key information security and privacy considerations that organizations need to evaluate while deciding a cloud vendor based on the services. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Sunil Varki. Good evening. Am I audible? Yes. <coughs> First of all, let me just uh, put it very straight. I am a supporter of cloud. Okay. As an information assurance professional, there are some concerns which we will discuss here and how we handle that. This was the same concerns the people had when the outsourcing wave also started. Okay. This is very, very common on, the, on that aspect. And my previous speaker has covered most of the things what I wanted to cover. And in the last two days, he would have covered most of the cloud part. So all, to put a context, there are two, three slides which will be covering the basics of the cloud. And overall, there is only five or six cloud uh, pages. The evolution has happened from a mainframe computing to the distributed computing to web 2.0 and now to the cloud. And there is a lot of advantages why people are looking at cloud to move into mainly from the rapid elasticity, paper use, visualized, virtualization, simplified and resource pooling IT. As we move from the internal community cloud to private cloud to public cloud, the risk also increasing for the organization perspective. And the organization control is also losing on that part. And as the earlier speakers mentioned, security and privacy is going to be one of the major challenges the organizations are looking at. As the economies of scale is growing, the control and governance is totally getting lost, which is the concern over here. And as we move from infrastructure as a service to a uh, platform as a service or a, to a software as a service, the control is totally lost. Okay. Now let us see what are the, from an enclosed perimeter where we had everything in control, now we are getting into a stage where totally everything is out. When outsourcing wave started, there were too many, most of the, the concerns we had had the same. Have we addressed everything of that? It's still, some are addressed, still is still a big, big nightmare for us. Okay. Organizations are not openly saying everything, but still there is a lot of concerns. I would take as a information assurance professional, I would take this as a major criteria. Identity and access management. When we are moving an application to a cloud, we are talking about a large number of users which is going to use that. It is not a five people of your organization who will have an access to a cloud service. How are we going to provision and deprovision these users effectively? In an organization where you have a 10,000 users, provisioning of users will happen openly, uh, promptly, because the users will start complaining saying, I didn't get the access. But the deprovisioning is a major challenge. Unless and until you have a technology in place to say that I have a robust system where deprovisioning will happen immediately. Now, in a cloud environment, are they going to connect the entire identity or the authentication to your active directory? Where, when an employee is moved out of your organization, immediately that gets disabled or deprovisioned in the cloud area also. May or may not happen that way. And while addressing all those things, the cost is adding to that. So when you add, does that economy work out there? Okay. So still, if you look into, uh, I come more from an operations point of view. Uh, that's my work experience, not from a consultancy. So most of the thing, what I say is the operational problems which we see on the real life. So uh, identity access management still remains, and privileged identity management. How many people, still the database administrators has full access to most of our databases. There was a survey a few years back, uh, in UK it was conducted, which said 40% of the IT administrators has accessed data using their privilege uh, access to uh, on others' data. So when they, so we, in this scenario of a cloud, we don't even know who is the database administrator. In an outsourced environment, at least you know this is your data center, you walk in, you see the database administrator there. But in this case, 
we don't even know who is that person. You see only the account manager. So what type of privilege identity man, uh, privilege access management they use? We need to be very, very clear. To provide a service, do they really need access to our data? May or may not. They may claim encryption is available. Can you index the data when it is totally encrypted? I, I, I personally, I feel it's, it's not possible or effect, not effective. So data may not be in encryption all, all, all always. Application control. After many, many years, say in the last 15 years of focus on information security across in all the enterprises, application security and and access management is still the biggest problem. Still server, the web applications are getting compromised for cross-site scripting and SQL injections. And applications still when we, in my experience, the most of the applications which I have seen, when it comes for the final testing also, still the session IDs, user ID management issues, everything still exists. Some of the software community is missing to understand the importance of, of the security controls in, uh, added across. Not sure whether the organizations are also emphasizing that additional trainings need to be provided to them. So when we are talking about a cloud environment, it is the entire interface is through, through web application, which is still a vulnerable area. So how do, so do we need to have much, much additional controls over there? Are they going to put a web application firewalls and NIPS, everything across over there? One consideration to look at. Privacy. When we are collecting information from our customer, we need to, as for the IT Act and all the privacy laws, we need to tell them very clearly the purpose of collection and how we are going to handle that data, who all will have access, how we are going to dispose it. Are we going to tell our customer, I'm going to collect your data and I'm going to give to Korea? So we need to seriously look at that. When we are actually getting into cloud where a sensitive data is involved, are we going to go back and change our privacy policy and publish to our customer saying that there is a change in our environment, we are going to outsource or, or go to cloud, there may be sensitive information of yours which may be hosted in a country outside of us. These are all addressable challenges but we need to consider that. And another problem I, I, I foresee in privacy, most of the European US countries has something called the breached disclosure clause. When you see an intrusion or when you have a say a laptop, as simple as a laptop lost which is not encrypted where the customer data is there, you need to announce it saying that I lost a system which had this many PIA information in it. One morning suddenly we will hear the news from a cloud provider where our data is there saying that I got hacked and this many customers data is there. Are we ready to take that shock? In an Indian environment or in our enterprise, we luckily we don't have that disclose clause here. We, we may not have to announce it, but we have to anticipate something happening also in that way. Second and operation management process. Are they going to, because cloud providers, as I understand, their core strength is they have infrastructure, they have, uh, that's their core strength. Are they going to manage the entire security themselves or are they going to outsource it? By whom? If it is going to be in, in, in some big countries, are they going to manage the cost that way? How, how are they, I mean, attacks these days are very, very real. Okay, even in the, after the 3G, 3G in, in this thing, we see a big rise on the entire attacks. How are they going to manage this entire security thing? What all controls are they going to put in? SLA management. One is the availability side of it. How are we actually going to measure it? Because I have remember in my earlier career, we used to bid for uh, the RFPs saying that I will assure 99.99 percentage availability. We don't even know whether their infrastructure has the capability to have that. Most of the time, it is a compulsion that we sign up 99.99 and just keep the fingers crossed and say that or put a buffer saying that I'll pay. So uh, I, I have not seen any, any vendors any time going back and say, can, can you answer all these questions to understand the maturity 
whether your system or where your network has the capability to handle that. Majority of the networks do not have the capability to be 99.99. If you look into the single point of failures and if you actually do the arithmetic or the calculation on that. Vulnerability and configuration management. Vulnerabilities are getting disclosed left right, patches are coming in. How are they going to apply it? Are they going to say that every month when a Microsoft or any of this Acrobat or any application say, they release it, I need a downline, are we going to accept it? We will not, because there is a scheduled vulnerable uh, access, uh, point they are saying, this is my scheduled outages, we are going to do it, we will agree it, maximum based on the negotiation they will say, once in every quarter, once in every six months, but every month the patches are coming. So, does that giving an indication saying that for the next three months I am guaranteed I can attack using that vulnerability? Configuration changes. Still on a, on a much well matured infrastructures, when we do audit on the configuration management, we see a huge deviations. Okay. For the ease of administrators to do that, how are this getting report, uh, is handled? Legal and regulatory implications. Most of the industries now have the clear regulatory thing that you cannot have a cross tra border transfer. So, uh, there are uh, my understanding the PCI DSS or those type of audit, uh, the, the compliance requirement, are they going to give the data to us? I heard in one of the regulations the requirement is that you need to have a copy of the same thing in your premise for, to, for the audit compliance. I remember in one organization when they outsourced their log, the email long time back, they, went, they never looked at the clause of uh, saying that, what is the, how do they give, if you have a problem, will they give the log of the emails for an investigation purpose. So, they wrote saying that five times in a year we will provide it free of charge, afterwards it is two thousand dollars. So, enough and more fraud in this organization, this small somebody sending a mail for a financial, uh, some expense reports and those types of, we need to investigate. But cost of email log is two thousand dollars, fraud is only five thousand. So, end of the day, Unofficially, we took a call saying if it is 10,000, let us keep quiet. Okay, because in the current environment, we would require too many logs for regulatory, for compliance. How are we going to get it? Are they really going to put all the stores, uh, logs uh, stored? Are they going to put everybody's in the same uh, uh, log server? Or are they going to put separate for us? As I said, it is manageable, but the cost implication is there. Change in policy to accommodate cloud and computing thing, because the moment you outsource or to put uh, move data to a public cloud, ideally you have to go and change your privacy policies. Your organization's policy also, by moving this data to outside, there is going to be deviations or exemptions to your policy. You have to go back to the management and say, my policy is has an exemption which need an approval for it. Life cycle of customers data. So, we talk about elasticity on when there is a surge, we use it for that time. How does this data go out after that? Another major thing is when we are selecting a, a, a provider, we need to ask them what is your privacy policy. Now, my privacy policy says I do not give this information to anybody and I will uh, only to my business partners and that too only for the purpose of business which you have asked for. If my partner policy says any information I collect, I am going to use it for the purpose or I am going to sell it for marketing advantages or some commercial reason, if that is the policy, are we going to deal with them? Currently in India, people are not much sensitive about privacy, but very shortly it is going to be. In our industry, we know a lot of people come back and say, who has access to my data? Slowly, slowly it is picking up. Encryption, everybody talk about encryption, key management in a huge multi-tenant area, how are we going to manage these keys? PKI did not pick up to the way it actually came up because of the key management issue. Now on a cloud where multi-tenant across the globe is there, how do we handle these keys? 
a consideration to have. Availability, most of the large uh, cloud providers we have seen outages. And also think about a situation, when the cloud became prominent and when the critical data started moving over there, hackers know exactly this is the place I need to hit. Okay. Because they do not have to wander around to find out which enterprise is vulnerable to hit. They know exactly this is the cloud, these are the IPs I need to hit. Can they take a huge, because denial of service or distributor of denial of service, all said and done, still organization cannot handle it. Lucky that we do not have much of a history of distributor denial of services in India. But now with 3G coming in, we are seeing a different uh, spin total. So, when everybody knows, okay, these are the five big IPs I need to hit, one is the academic interest, people wanted to make a try and say that I, I, I made it come down. The second is, the entire data is there, that is where to hit. Lock in. From an availability perspective, okay, you went in there, how do we move out? Most of the time, business take the call to move to cloud saying that I can be live in the next seven days time, because I do not have to wait for approval pros to get five new servers. I just agree with it. I just go host straight. Everything is fine. Now, once the one side is that, how do I move out? Isolation failure, compliance risk, malicious insider. Most of the surveys, which I do not believe always, 70 percent of the attacks are internal attacks. There is a different uh, school of thought on that. That survey initially uh, was uh, initiated by a government organization in US. They sent it out saying that we are collecting a the anonymous survey, give the information. Uh, there was a questionnaire or a survey to fill. So, it asked, ha did you had a security breach? So, the question can we say no? Everybody said yes or security incident, yes. Was it external or internal? Although it is anonymous, given by a government agency, what will you say? Internal. What type? Password, uh, laptop loss, malware. Majority of the people did not say that it was an, ex that I had an external attack. Either they did not detect or they did not announce. Total res respondents were 12. And that was the first report which came out, 70 percent of the attacks are internal. Okay. And then everybody followed up. And it, in reality, it is too difficult to quantify also. So, in every organization, we are seeing enough and more insiders who is involved. It. One can be accidental, one can be deliberate. On a cloud environment where we do not even know which country it has been hosted, how do we guarantee this insider is not there? The technical risk, we have hypervisors and new technologies, everything coming which is not at much wood. No, I am not talking about virtualization, the new, the entire thing, data leakage itself. Considering all these challenges, the approach which we feel is, we need to look at the overall business opportunity and the appetite of the risk of the organization. Based on thing, you need to decide what is the criticality of the data which I am moving in. On the policy and organization risk, technical risk and legal side, on these parameters, and decide what to move. And that is my last slide. Thank you very much for that. Any questions? Questions, yeah. No more? Okay. Uh, thank you so much for that wonderful talk. Uh, please accept a, to a token of our appreciation, please.